Again in 3D. <laughs> oh, I like Vinnie Del Negro. Nice. I like that. Way to come up with the good stuff. It's, an, it's initials. Oh, I don't know. It wasn't that, wasn't that clever. So a little but, flavorful, though, man. We'll get a little flavorful. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that Dubs Thunder game a little later on, and you'll get to hear some more of Fergie's unforgettable national anthem from Again? All Star Sunday. I promise. Again? First, though, the latest on Jimmy Butler. Butler will miss another reunion with the Bulls tonight after going down last night in Houston. The Timberwolves All-Star hurt his right knee in the loss to the Rockets. Today, the Timberwolves announced that an MRI revealed a right meniscus injury, but nothing more specific than that. And the Wolves offered no information or treatment or a timeline for his return. Now, John Krasinski covers the Tim Rules for The Athletic, and he joins us now from Minneapolis. And, John, the team statement is fairly vague today. Tom Thibodeau is scheduled to speak on the subject and, and anything else in a few minutes now. But presumably, uh, Butler and the team are mulling their options. Just how serious is the injury, and what do we know of those options at this point? Yeah, Matt, he's definitely got a torn meniscus, um, and so that brings about a couple of different options that they're trying to mull over right now. One is he can have that meniscus removed, and that carries with it maybe around a six-week timeline uh, of recovery, which means theoretically he might be able to get back right at the end of the season, and then if there are some playoffs involved, might be available for that. Um, but it does carry some longer-term issues, possibly some arthritis and things like that that he would have to battle down the road the other option is for him to have it repaired and uh, if he does if there is an option for him to have it repaired that carries a three to six month recovery time which means obviously he would miss the rest of this season but all in all I think the Timberwolves are breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief that he avoided an ACL tear which would have been maybe a year or so mm. out of action so they dodged a bit of a bullet but clearly they have a lot of work cut out for them to be missing Jimmy Butler for the next couple of weeks at least. Yeah, either way, not good. It's a long-term injury for Butler. Uh, John, one of the instant social media age reactions was that all the minutes Butler has logged over his career and this season, when he led the league at the All-Star break in that category, had perhaps caught up to him. Obviously, there is no way to connect those dots in any real way, but how did Tom Thibodeau's players view his tendency to play his starters those heavy minutes? Well, here in Minnesota, they've embraced it. Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, they like Jimmy Butler, Taj Gibson. They like to be on the floor and they like to play big minutes because they feel like they can be their best equipped to change the outcome of games. I mean, I know that Tibbs has come under scrutiny in the past in Chicago for the way that he he kind of runs players ragged as well, but. When you look at it, uh, especially this year, guys, I can tell you, they hardly practice at all. I mean, they, they play a lot of minutes in games, but Tibbs has not been practicing them very much to try and reduce that workload and that wear and tear on their knees. And I think what we're just seeing is maybe some bad luck. Um, we don't know exactly how much those minutes have really added up for Jimmy Butler. But also remember, guys, Fred Hoiberg played Jimmy Butler heavy minutes in Chicago as well. So um, it's not just a, a villainous Tom Thibodeau here, I don't think. <laughs> well, well, John, you just confirmed a few things because we know the old Tibbs in Chicago, he would run him hard and practice him hard, so he has cut back on that. So my big question is now with Jimmy going down, has it been enough experience around this team to say we can truly hold down the fort till Jimmy gets back because we're finally looking forward to the playoffs? Well, Dennis, yeah, it's going to be a huge challenge. I mean, Jimmy is the heart and soul of this team, both offensively and defensively. He brings an edge, a competitive edge that they didn't have before he got there. And so their work is really cut out for them. They're in a log jam in the Western Conference right now in that 3 through 10 range. They're actually right now tied in the loss column for eighth. And so it's going to be incredibly difficult for them. They have a very tough schedule down the stretch. But... Uh, I think that Jimmy has really worked hard to try to prepare these guys to be ready to play in case he cannot go. Andrew Wiggins, in, the, in, in a four-game absence that Jimmy had in January, Andrew Wiggins really stepped up his game, averaged almost 26 points on 50% shooting, four rebounds, three assists. They're going to need a lot more of that, a super aggressive Wiggins. They're going to need an all-star caliber, Carl Anthony Towns, to try to weather this storm. But there's no question that Butler was on the short list of MVP candidates as far as I'm concerned. So you take him out of the lineup, it's a huge blow to overcome. Well, John, Vinny Del Negro here. We can talk about Coach Tibbs all, all we need to. The defensive numbers speak for themselves. Do you expect them, with Jimmy Butler's absence, 
to do anything different in terms of slowing the tempo or getting more isolation plays like you talked about, maybe Wiggins or Car Anthony Towns. What is he going to go to to combat the loss of Butler? Yeah, so what we saw when Butler was out earlier in the year, Vinny, was that uh, Andrew Wiggins kind of ascended from that third option to the first option right over Carl Anthony Towns because a Thibodeau offense really kind of revolves around a, a dynamic wing player who can get to the basket, break a defense down off the dribble, and make some tough contested jumpers. That's what Andrew Wiggins does. So I think you'll see that again going forward. The real issue I think that they're going to run into is defensively. They have not been playing well defensively even with Jimmy Butler on the floor. The last 15 games before the All-Star break, they were 29th in defensive efficiency. They're 26th overall for the year. Tom Thibodeau has tried a lot of different things to try and connect with this group defensively and get some results, and they haven't got it. Now you take away maybe the best defender on the team, and that's where the, I just don't see how they're going to recover there and, and get some stops that they need to get because they weren't getting him when he was on the floor. Yeah, not only their best defender, uh, their best player, at least in terms of production this season, you might argue Carl Anthony Towns because of upside is their best player moving forward, but Butler led them in scoring, led them in steals, second in assists, but to me, his value transcends the numbers in that he's been a voice for Tom Thibodeau, having played for him for so long in Chicago, to relay exactly what Coach Tibbs wants. Is there any way, I guess there's no way to quantify it, but to explain how valuable he has been to this team in his first year? Yeah, I, he, like, I think that he is on the short list of most valuable, not just for the production, but for the leadership in the locker room. I mean, Tibbs, I think, had a little bit of a hard time connecting with the young players last year in his first season, and he certainly brought in Taj Gibson and Jimmy Butler, two guys who had extensive experience playing with him, to try and act as intermediaries, to try and reach these younger players uh, when they weren't quite picking up what Tibbs was putting down. And, and Butler's been invaluable that way. He's, he's the guy who can put a, an arm around their shoulder when Tibbs jumps on them, or he's the guy that can kind of kick them in the butt that they respect in the locker room as a player who plays heavy minutes, who lays his heart on the line every single night. And so he really does command that locker room. He is the alpha leader of that group. And so you take that off, off of that team, and not only do you miss all of the production, on the court, but you just miss that steadying influence in the locker room. You miss that guy who brings the edge and the focus and the nasty competitiveness that this team so desperately lacked before he arrived. And uh, so, I mean, there are just there are losses just on multiple levels when you take Jimmy Butler away for any stretch of time here. Yeah, tough blow, no matter how you slice it. Appreciate the time, John John Krasinski, with us from the Athletic in Minneapolis. All right, guys, first of all, I want to talk about the, the treatment options because you heard we've seen this injury before, torn meniscus. There are a couple of ways to go about it. As John said, the player can have the meniscus removed and you can function that way, mm -hmm. but there are longer-term implications that could affect the latter stages of a player's career and certainly his life after his career. Um, or that's, that's the short-term gain. You come back more quickly. Or the player can opt for surgery you're out for the rest of the season. In Butler's case, more than likely, you're looking at a six-month recovery. But the long-term effects are basically negated. How, how would you advise him, given this stage of his career and where the Timberwolves are and all the factors he has to consider? Well, I think you have to protect the player first. I mean, obviously, we're looking at uh, an all-star player in Jimmy Butler, uh, a guy that means so much to the franchise. If uh, he can't play the rest of the year and they say, uh, if they were to say to me, uh, it's going to be six months, he's going to miss the rest of the year, but his career is going to be that much better. He's going to keep his meniscus. We're going to clean it up in there and get him the rehab. You know, I would do extensive uh, research on players that have had taken out and what their you know ramifications are there, what they felt, and really just get a few opinions. But they're going to look at the long-term situation for Jimmy Butler first and foremost. Yeah, Matt, you look at the long-term thing first. I remember, I think it was Ron Ortest or Metal World Peace back in the Lakers when he did the same thing. I think he had the surgery right back in, I think, within a week. So as you look at where you are in your career, to your point, you look at where you are with the team you're with, with Minnesota. It's the first time they're going to the playoffs in a long time, and he's one of the main reasons why they're doing that. So you have to take that in consideration. And like I asked John, is the team – good enough right now to hold down the fort, Matt, at that four spot, knowing that if he sets down for the rest of the season, 
they may slide out of the playoffs because they're that fragile as a team, depending yeah. on who you talk to, and their bench not being as deep as it needs to be to hold down the fort. So I think in Jimmy's case,